Greetings YouTube. This week's video starts with this pedestal sundial, which actually tells pretty good time because it actually is 2 p.m. at the moment and it's at 2 p.m. So this is not the uh, permanent position that the sundial will, will have. That's going to need to be a little more level. Um, that helps it, I guess. Uh, and also we have these two bats and this, black, this one with the black tape here is going to be used almost immediately, which is why I'm doing the filming now so I can go into the shop and start working on it. Um, but I got the two bats for a buck a piece at an estate sale, and I got the uh, a sundial for 15 bucks. It's on a cement, a light cement stand, hollow, um, and the top is uh, is uh, metal, and it has a sun wheel, which is which is quite nice. So yeah, it's a nice little, it's a nice pedestal, nice sundial. On to the next section. Greetings, YouTube. Time for another video. Uh, bargain video, I specify. Uh, first up, we have The World of the Dark Crystal by um, Brian Froud, which I picked up at, an, at a yard sale, a large yard sale, um, for 50 cents. The artwork is really, really lovely. I'll do a video about that one. Um, the Brewmaster's Table, um, discovering the pleasures of... Uh, Real beer with real food. My wife is a um, a, a, a beer fan. I, I don't drink alcohol. Mountain Rescue Doctor. Wilderness medicine in the extremes of nature. That should be depressing. Um, who gave Pinta the Santa Maria? Tracking the devastating spread of lethal tropical diseases into America. Um, I have a, uh, a fondness for books about diseases. The Queen of Camp. May West. Sex and popular culture. Um, Mae West was a fascinating human, and I'm looking forward to reading that. Then we have um, a book about the a video game, um, Del Toro Quest, and this is like a, it's just concentrates on the monsters from the game. So I, it's from Scholastic, so I figure I might be able to glean something out of that um, for role-playing games, and I think I paid, I don't know, 39 or 40 cents for something like that at a, at a thrift shop. We have, uh, Star Trek Mr. Scott's Guide to the Enterprise and Howard the Duck and both of these are a gift or gifts for a friend of mine. Motel of Mysteries by David McCauley. David McCauley is most famously known for doing the books like Cathedral and Castle and the Pyramid where he does these detailed stories about how they were built and their internal structures and things like that. And this is a fictitious view of a far future time period when someone is excavating a modern motel to figure out what it was for and who stayed there and what it what, what, and and what it represented, um, we have Star Wars: The New Essential Guide to Weapons and Technology. I picked this up at Barnes and Noble for thirteen bucks. It may still be available at the time of the viewing, this viewing when it's originally aired. I'm going back next paycheck to pick up the New Essential Guide to Droids, which they also have in hardcover. I have both of those in soft cover from a previous edition. Um, I will get rid of those and replace them. We have Accessible Gardening for People with Physical Disabilities, a guide to methods, tools, and plants. My mother-in-law has mobility issues, so I thought that this might be of use to her and her mother, my wife and her mother. Um, and I paid a penny for this on Amazon secondary market, um, plus shipping and handling, so four bucks total for the, for the book. And then we have Frank Miller's Helen Back, A Sin City Love Story. I haven't read this one, um, and uh, I do enjoy Frank Miller's earlier work before he bought his own hype, and he started thinking that he actually was as famous and wonderful and spiffy keen as everyone had been telling them for far too long. A couple more books. We have The Home Workshop Annual from 1945, which I paid 50 cents for. It only seemed appropriate because that's what it was in 1945. Um, and I don't know if I'll be keeping this. I may be able to give it to my father or something. But it, I saw this and I'm like, I got to look and see what they were thinking about for home improvements and stuff, work, home workshop projects uh, a very long time ago. Then we have um, Brick Wall. And this is an art book. So what you do is you have different layers. And each layer then leads into the next layer. So it's essentially you're moving through the picture 
like a zooming camera, like a camera just, just dolly shot right through, one contiguous shot through the entire thing. I'll have to do a video on that one. I find that quite fascinating. Um, then we have Mud with Matthew McConaughey. Hoosers, I, uh, I've never seen this movie. I've heard good things about it. And I like Gene Hackman. Um, the Jerk, my wife is a uh, Steve Martin fan. This is the 26th annual uh, anniversary edition. Um, we have Nim's Island, which was never opened. I, I saw that originally, like a trailer for that years ago. I never saw the film, and it looked cute, so for a buck, I'll watch it. Uh, then we have the 60th anniversary edition of Dumbo. Now, I haven't seen Dumbo since I was a child. Um, we have uh, Bang Ragan, um, or Rajan, which is uh, the story of people defending their villages in uh, against colonial um, and uh, oppression. And I'd heard this as being very good, but I never saw it in any theaters. And then I found it at a flea market for a buck, and I'm like, alrighty. And it's being presented by Oliver Stone. Uh, the Cat in the Hat, which my wife wanted. Um, the Meanest Men in the West. Lee Marvin and Charles Bronson. I can't, can't go wrong with that combo. And I'd never heard of it. So I'll give it a view. Independence Day. Yes, it's horribly dated, but it was still very entertaining. I was I was quite pleased to see that again, and I heard it. And it's and I've heard that the remake is I mean rather the sequel is horrible. A Piranha Double D. Um, I saw the original Piranha. It was horrible, but it had a certain charm to it. So I thought I'd for a buck I'd give this a view, and I'm ex I'm expecting a lot of TNA in that one. Um, we have Alien Invasion, and I picked this as four 1950 eras science fiction films and there's one in here about a mad scientist deciding that the only way to save humanity is to go and find some subterranean re uh, um, sanctuary like at the center of the earth so yeah i gotta see that um we have happily ever after a film i've never seen and this was never opened <laughs> zombie land i finally bit the bullet on this one and decided yes even though it's a zombie film i find woody harrelson very charming and i want to see the bill murray scene so I'm going to watch it and hope it doesn't I'll have to make sure I have, have a unicorn chaser. Fried Green Tomatoes, which I actually really like this film. And this is a commentary track. Um, we have Antibody, which has got Lance Hendrickson in it. And apparently it's kind of a fantastic voyage ripoff. You know, they have to go into someone's body and save them. There's a little miniature ship kind of thing. So I'm like, okay, let's see how bad it is. And speaking of bad, The Last Airbender. I am expecting zero out of this, except it being painful. Uh, we have uh, Gerard Butler in Gamer. And I kind of like the idea of someone like remotely controlling a human being who's a, like on death row or something. I thought that was kind of intriguing. Uh, then we have some classic horror films. My wife enjoys classic horror films. We have Driver with Ryan O'Neill. This is a fascinating film. I mean, I have to do a review of it, but it's fascinating. None of the characters in the entire film has a name. None of them. It's interesting. And then we have Drive, which I thought was appropriate to put, it, to put them next to each other, which is about, again, about a driver. Both of these are about drivers, both who are, are criminals. Um, this is Alec Brooks in it, um, who, a guy, um, Alan Brooks, rather, who, a guy who I, I, I respect. And uh, Ryan Gosling, I heard, heard is pretty good in this. And he was excellent in The Nice Guys. Uh, on to the next section, which I have no clue what it is. Here we have a key rack, um, which has more hooks than the one I have currently. It's cast iron. It's um, far more innate and attractive than the one I've got at the moment. The one I've got at the moment is the most bare bones thing you can imagine. And I picked, paid up a uh, dollar for this at a yard sale. So I'm like, cool. And it will fit in the same location, just a smidge lower than the one I have at the moment. We got a dinosaur for free at the same place. And so I thought, free dinosaur, I could put that into a, a video describing the use of inexpensive miniatures for uh, inexpensive, inexpensive figures as miniatures. We have one of the Wild Thing R figures for my wife. This bowl was part of a set that my wife's been collecting. We bought that at a thrift shop for two bucks, and it's in excellent condition. Um, we have some weird dice. This is 20-sided with letters on it. These two are 8-sided with weird symbols. I have no idea what they mean or what this is from. It says T3 on that one. I have no idea what these symbols mean. 
If anyone out there tells me what these are, that would be cool. I got two of these. Um, and then we have this one, which is a football-shaped die six, because you roll it, you roll it um, on this axis to get a, to get a one to six. That was kind of cute. I didn't have one of those. Uh, we have a Judge Death figure, which I picked up at a yard sale, where there was nothing else even close to this in that collection. They had like some Power Rangers and some Batman figures, and they had this guy. I paid a quarter for him. Like, okay, cool. Um, we have this, which is actually supposed to be a helmet of some kind, but I think it'll make an intriguing monster on its own. We have this awesome spider. We have a glow-in-the-dark uh, flying ant. We have um, this, which was a mammalian megafauna, and I don't remember the name of it. Um, and then we have a figure from Pacific Rim, which would be excellent at the 25 millimeter scale. Um, we have a gorilla with banana. My wife bought that for me because um, she thought it was cute. She actually put it in the office in the hopes I'd find it, and I didn't. <laughs> She's like, have you seen it? Have you noticed it? I'm like, no. So I didn't notice the gorilla. I didn't notice the gorilla in the room. Um, then we have a bird house, which has a patch in the bottom you can take off for cleaning. I may finish that. I may just, I may, I may sand it and refinish it before I hang it up. Um, but it was, it's really interesting. I made India. I kind of like the shape. Um, and it was like four bucks, something I put outside for the birds. Uh, we have this uh, Japanese knife, which I think was originally part of a steak knife set, but the person only had three of them, so she was willing to sell one of them to me. So I picked the one, the best one out of the lot. And I may experiment with trying to sharpen this, because at the moment it's, yeah, it's not bad, but it really needs some work. And I've never sharpened a blade like this, because it's almost, it's it's got a convex grind with almost zero secondary bevel so I, it might be a challenge but we'll find out we have this tin full of gears and sprockets and these are going to be used in weapon builds like this one i'm already using have an idea for as i do for this one these here I, i'm going to do something with them i just don't know quite what how i'm going to arrange them um in a build so yeah you'll be seeing these in future stuff and i picked this entire tin up for three dollars apparently you wanted to get rid of them and we have this shirt. Um, there was actually a second shirt. It was a very similar theme, but dark blue. It's really quite pretty. My wife has already washed it, worn it, and now it's gone off to wherever shirts go in my wife's collection. So it's not in this video. Um, then we have a ceramic uh, chime or bell um, with the dragon on it. My wife liked the dragon. We have an owl cube, which I purchased for a co-worker of mine who was a major major fan of owl she has an owl tattoo and this was made in italy and we have some bells that should come as no surprise to anybody this one is a very grumpy reindeer just looks surly um it's kind of interesting they ground it i don't know if they ground it like this because to make it flat or to improve the sound but they ground it we have this one, which is from India, so it's probably like a Sarna bell, uh, but my wife liked the top um, and the sound. It's a nice tone. And this one is solid brass, solid. It is really heavy. And I like the proportions and uh, the patina and it has a lovely tone. And this is a glass ornament of a train. My father uh, grew up around trains in uh, the coal country of Pennsylvania. And so I got this for his Christmas tree. Um, I think I paid a buck for that. Then we have a fish bat. This is an actual bat design for smacking fish when you're out big, game, big fish game hunting or game fishing. And it's hollowed in the center. Anyone want to guess what I'm going to do with this? Um, then we have a set of bola. Um, and these are in excellent shape. This is rawhide. It's very supple. And I think I want to see if I can find a location to learn how to throw one of these. Because I haven't thrown one, Ebola since I was a teenager. And I was very, very dangerous with them. So I'd like to learn how to do a better job. And I've done some research online. So there's two different methods to throw them. So one method using the, the where they meet. And one method using one of the, the smaller of the three balls here. Um, I don't know what's in here. But they are definitely, they are definitely hard. Um, but these are in really nice shape, and I paid four dollars and fifty cents for these at an estate sale. Same place my wife got the shirt or shirts, because there was two shirts. Um, on to one last section, I think. On to the last section. 
Uh, this is just a decent piece of chain. I picked that up cheap. I don't know what this is. Um, it's heavy cable with um, a clamp here. And then it comes into this. And this is the, the, the cable is securely attached. And it has these two screws, which are offset. So you could put something in here and then clamp down on it firmly. So I am going to turn that into a flail. This is going to become the joint between the shaft and then hanging an object off here. I don't know what I'm going to hang off here yet. And I'm probably going to use a solid steel shaft just for fun. If I could find one that diameter. Um, we'll find out. I may have a piece of shaft kicking around in my garage already. We're going to go down and find that out. Sometimes you don't have to dig around for stuff. Um, this is a umbrella stand. And what I'm thinking of doing is you screw it to your, into, the, into the ground. And I'm thinking of making a bird bath out of a platter and then using this to create a for the shaft to the bird bath and I'll probably use a transition a pipe fixture transition and then screw that to a wooden platter which I will polyurethane and then JB weld the wood and the platter together so you can't actually see the wood it'll be underneath um, and then the nice thing about this is that I will be able to just unscrew this take the whole thing off for winter storage put it back or cleaning and then tighten right back up again so that that'll be quite nice and I picked this up for two bucks um, at, a, at a yard sale got some zip ties for my friend's toolbox which is pretty much done at this point uh, we have this HDX a bit set and I actually own this one I keep it down in the shop and I quite like it so she's getting this set it never been open never been brand new I paid up eight bucks for it um, this uh, little pry bar which needs a little bit of love but I can give it a little bit of love so I think every toolbox needs a, um, a pry bar, um, a small pry bar at least. And then we have a set of wrenches, which will, they come in this little case. I think I paid two bucks for those at a yard sale. So I'm gonna wrap them up and that'll go in there. So you have a set of um, open end wrenches. And there's this um, set of, it's a ratchet. It's not the best quality ratchet, but it's a functioning ratchet. Um, and it's the kind of, it's the, it's the grade ratchet set I had for a very long time till I upgraded and it worked admirably. And for my friend who's gonna be just doing things around the house, this is probably gonna work. Unfortunately, the container, the tray is in really rough shape. So I don't know what to do about that. Um, but for, I think two or $3 I paid for this, it works and it's got enough sizes that you should be able to find your, you know, whatever it is you need for around the house repairs or very basic car repairs, this should do it. Um, Cause I'm, well, I love, buying gifts for my friends. I'm not made of money. Um, and then we have this folding knife, which my father gave me. So that's kind of interesting. It, the whole thing, it fits into a credit card slot in your wallet if you want, and it folds out. And then this this folds in to create a handle. Um, obviously not heavy duty, but it's better than having no blade at all on your person. And then we have this, which is a US made 24 inch pair of bolt cutters. And they're, in, and they're rusty. But they're in operating condition. There's nothing wrong with it. These pads are a smidge on the worn side. But I don't need bolt cutters this big very often. But by gosh and by golly, when I do need them, I've got them. And I may clean these up um, a little bit. Because it does. made in Boston, Massachusetts. Which I thought was quite cool. I need to look this up and see if I can find out about uh, this company. Uh, I think it's, what is it? HKP, I think? Or something like that. I can't quite tell. Uh, like I said, my contrast vision isn't the best in the universe. Um, so that was a really nice find at a yard sale. And I paid five dollars for those, which is awesome price for a I said a twenty-four inch bowl cutters. Yeah, that was a good find. So there you go, folks. This has been my latest bargain video.